welcome to Costa Rica, a new country for me. We're actually right now on a volcano. This is Jeff. Jeff is our CEO, our guide on this trip, and we're actually on top of the highest volcano of the country, just to get an overview before we dive into the culture. Buena vida guys, welcome to the Irazú volcano, uh, the highest volcano in Costa Rica, 3,420 meters, and it's active as well, one of the five active volcanoes here in Costa Rica. Uh, we're right now uh, at the top, uh, you can see the main crater, well actually you can't see it very well because <laughs> of the clouds, but uh, the main crater and the lagoon are uh, right over here. And uh, we're stopping here on the way to our jungle trekking, which starts tomorrow, where we're going to be uh, meeting some local families and staying with them, doing some fun activities in the jungle and lots and lots of hiking. Uh, I'm excited. Pura vida. Pura vida. Let's do this. Costa Rica is a country in Central America, bordered by Nicaragua to the north, the Caribbean Sea to the northeast, Panama to the southeast, and the Pacific Ocean to the southwest. The country is known for its long-standing and stable democracy, and for its highly educated workforce, most of whom speak English. Costa Rica also has progressive environmental policies. It is the only country to meet all five UNDP criteria established to measure environmental sustainability. A pioneer of ecotourism, Costa Rica draws many tourists to its extensive series of national parks and other protected areas. The country plans to become a carbon neutral country by 2021 and began reversing deforestation in the 1990s. By 2016, 98% of its electricity was generated from green sources, particularly hydro, solar, geothermal and biomass. As a brand ambassador for G-Adventures, I decided to join an active tour that focuses on local living in the middle of the jungle, in order to get a better understanding of this biodiverse country and the way of life. It is 5.30 and now the fun begins. We're getting on these pickup trucks over there and then we're heading into the jungle. As you can hear that, we're now in the jungle after having breakfast and after crossing the river with a cable car, we now start our jungle track. This is the first day and we will be hiking to local families who live in the jungle and one of the family members is actually with us it's our guide Omida. So what are we about to do today? Um, we start hiking 12 kilometers all the way to my father's house. It's one of the hardest day. Um, we climb a red hill and from there we continue for another 20 minutes. We meet the lunch and we continue on our way to my father's house. All right that sounds super exciting so let's do this. This is not really high altitude hiking, but the humidity kills you. Whew. It's like hiking and doing hot yoga. Alright, and there we are. We just arrived at the house of the Lopez family. This is where we're gonna stay. Me llamo Hormidas. Que regresamos de la ciudad hacia aquí, hacia la montaña, con una idea de, de trabajar con pasto, ganado, agricultura. Y hemos trabajado ya por 27 años con, con turismo. Y hemos tenido muy lindas experiencias a través de gente de todo el mundo que hemos conocido y nos han visitado hasta acá. Y, y estamos muy contentos con con ver cambiado de, de opinión, ¿verdad? Sí, gracias a, a, al turismo nos ha ido mucho mejor que si estuviéramos destruyendo el bosque o esas cosas, ¿verdad? Sí. Good morning. What better way to start today on a farm in the jungle? Then milking some cows. Next 
thing we're about to learn is how to make sugarcane candy. Yes. Not too hard because you can burn the sugarcane. Oh, ouch. Grab it. Okay, so now, so now, so now it's going to be placed into the bowl. All right, this is it for this homestay with the Lopez family, and now we're heading to another family to the Granados and it's just about two and a half kilometers and there we are about to learn how to make bread and cheese. Okay. After having breakfast at the house of the Granados, we are now on the road again. We are hiking up the Red Mountain again and we are heading to the Fonsecas where tree climbing is waiting for us and a hot sauna. the home of Fonseca's and we have a view to the river. It's pretty amazing. This is where we sleep. Just over there. This is where we eat. And here, that's the view. What? After settling in, we got introduced to tree climbing before cooling off in the crystal clear water. Followed by a jungle sauna session and another workshop where we learned how to make our own chocolate from scratch. That's truly the way to spend the day in the jungle. We just left the house of the Fonsecas and we're now on our way to Brujo. This is where we started our jungle adventure. And today on the menu is rafting. Are you excited? The following four hours we rafted down the Rio Sabegre, which has rapids up to class 4. In between we slid down natural water slides, had a big lunch in the middle of the jungle and got to take a shower underneath a huge waterfall before arriving at the coast in Dominical. Dominical is a small beachfront town in the province of Punta Arenas on the west coast of the country, which is popular for its surf. We used our day off here to recharge before we made our way back into the jungle where the next exciting adventure was waiting for us. After a rather slow day by the beach in Dominical, we're now back at it. We're hiking up to the Diamante Falls here in the Valle de las Tumbas. The hike is about three kilometers and we will climb up about 800 meters and then we will overnight at a cave. And we're eating termites because that's what you do when you're in the jungle. 
taste like carrots. And we have arrived at the cave just behind the waterfall. This is where we will be sleeping for tonight, so let me show you around. We have something exciting coming up. This is the dining area with a view. And here's the kitchen. And then if you go a little bit higher up, you have the bar. <laughs> there we go. Next up is waterfall repelling. We're just getting geared up here. And we go up top of the waterfall. After this adrenaline rush, we enjoyed some downtime playing cards and watching the sunset over the coast from our elevated position at the waterfall. Then it was time for dinner, before we wrapped up this day over travel stories by the fire. After a rich breakfast, we hiked out of the jungle and went back to the coast. This time, a little further south to the town of Uvita, where we wanted to use the chance to see some marine wildlife. We are now in Uvita and today we are visiting the Parque Nacional Marino Ballena, which means the whale's tail. And it's called the whale's tail, not only because you can see whales, but also because of the shape of the land. There's a sandbar reaching out which looks like a whale tail. Go on a little boat trip, do some snorkeling and try to find some fish in the water. The Marino Ballena National Park is named after the humpback whales that migrate from mid-July to November and again in December to April from the feeding and mating grounds in the North and South Hemispheres to the warm tropical waters of Costa Rica. Also we got lucky and had a chance to say hi to a few whales who were in the area as well as dolphins and sea turtles. It is sadly our last day on the tour and we decided to come to the Manuel Antonio National Park which is one of the most popular places to visit here in Costa Rica and it is also listed as one of the most beautiful national parks in the world. So let's have a look if we can find some wildlife. Although Manuel Antonio is Costa Rica's smallest national park, the diversity of wildlife in its 6.8 square kilometers is unequaled with 109 species of mammals and 184 species of birds. Both brown-throated three-toed sloth and Hoffman's two-toed sloth are a major feature. Two-toed sloth, two-toed, by the face, big nose, easy, you won't forget it. So, two-toed, big nose. Three-toed is always, forever, happy, smiling. <laughs> so we can tell that he's smiling because he has one more toe than the other one, right? As are three of Costa Rica's four monkey species. The mantled howler monkey, the Panamanian white-faced capuchin monkey, and the Central American squirrel monkey. And this is the only type of monkey in Costa Rica that does not have prehensile tails. So their tail is just for balance, but they cannot use it to grab anything. After finishing this incredibly fun and diverse tour, I decided to stay a few more days on the west coast to go surfing and to relax before heading back home with many new stories to tell. <laughs>